All right, I'd like to say thank you everybody for all of your support here on these videos and this historical uh, events that we're doing here on Facebook and YouTube. And uh, first of all, let's get right into it, is that Houston did not have no identity. That mean, when I say no identity, didn't nobody know nothing about Houston, Texas. The only thing they knew about Houston, Texas was like the great oil spindle that happened in 1901. Well, a lot of oil men who had oil fields came and moved to Houston because of the great oil spindle that happened in 1901 out there in uh, Beaumont in Port Arthur. And most of them moved to Houston and left their plants out there towards Baytown all the way up until uh, Port Arthur. But the bottom line, nobody knew nothing about Houston except oil. And when they had an identity of Mr. Adams bringing the first semi-pro team here, which was the Houston Oilers, the identity was oil. That's why they got Oilers. And Mr. Adams come up with the name Oilers. You know, before then, they did have a, a, a minor league team of baseball, which was called the Houston Buffs. But the identity was never identified until 1960 when Mr. Adams bought in the Oilers. And NFL did not want to come to the South because of the Jim Crow law. And when they did decide to come to the South, it wasn't here in Houston, it was in Dallas. And the thing about that is that they bought in a, a, a oversight to make sure that it wouldn't be no segregation among the NFL players and the city. When they went to Dallas, they bought in Tex Stram, which Tex Stram was the president of the Dallas Cowboys. And the owner, Clinton Mitchens, did not want to be part of the scenery, so he let Tex Stram, who once was the president of the Los Angeles Rams, and also hired Pete Rosell as his PR man for the Los Angeles Rams and the oversight to make sure no discrimination would come with the new professional football team that was coming to Texas that was called the Dallas Cowboys. But I'm talking right now about us here in Houston. We'll get on to that into another segment. But right now we're talking about Houston having an identity. So all was the identity, but like I said, it wasn't a major league sport. The AFL was not a major like the NFL. So finally in 1962, when they bought in the Space Center here, and that was because of Johnson, because they needed to put a Space Center. Kennedy wanted a dream of having a Space Center. And no place other than Houston had that kind of room for a Space Center to have that much land and that much land to provide for a space center. So they came to Houston, thanks to LBJ, because LBJ was the vice president for John Fitzgerald Kennedy. And he the one told Kennedy about coming to Houston. Kennedy did not know anything about Houston. When they thought of Texas, they thought of Dallas. So when they came here, and built the Space Center because they felt like the Space Center would give them worldwide attention, not just around the United States, but all over the world. And that's when we became an identity. We had some kind of identity here in Houston. We became to be a space city instead of an oil city like we used to be because nobody really identified with oil like they did with space. And that's when they came up with the Astros. And the Harfines, 
the really the name was like we said was before the Code 45, and uh, Mr. George Roy Harfine, who bought the team here and got the franchise. Because see, when you get in a major league franchise, they did not want to come to the South. That's why today you don't see no major league baseball teams in New Orleans or Mississippi. And the reason why you see it in Atlanta, because Atlanta did not have that baseball team. That baseball team came from Milwaukee. That what used to be the Milwaukee Braves. And Hank Aaron came over with that transition from Milwaukee to Atlanta. So they did not have, and that's why you don't see no Charlotte or none of them teams in the South with a major league baseball team. But Harfine had promised them that they would not discriminate. And when they first came out here, they was the Code 45. And then when they did get the identity of space, then Houston began to have a space identity. That's why when everybody else came to move in here, like the Houston Rockets, the professional basketball team, it was the Houston Rockets. And everything was geared around space here in Houston. And the Houston Astros, along with Mr. Hoffine, he liked it the name Astro. That the dome was not called the Astro Dome. No, when they first built that dome in Harris County, it was called the Astro Dome. Mr. Judge Roy Hoffine liked it Astro so much, so he put Astro Dome on it. And when Playland Park closed down and Mr. Hoffine and his family and them seen the amusement that was going on, that they was not going to be discriminated like Playland Park, then Mr. Hoffine and his family built the place and they owned the property across from the Astrodome, and that's how you got to be called the Astro World. See, everything was about Astro. The Astro Hall. And Mr. George Roy Hoffine, who was once a Harris County judge and became mayor, and also put together Mr. Bob Smith, put together to build the Astrodome. And before, it was just called the Dome Stadium, Harris County Dome Stadium. That was the original name. And when they bought in baseball here, and it made Houston a major city now. People can identify with Houston, Texas now. And then later on, around, around about 1965, Dr. Michael DeBakey over at Methodist Hospital, he performed the first heart surgery. And then later on, Dr. Denton Cooley over there at St. Luke's made another remarkable thing with another heart transplant. So now Houston was beginning to be not only a space city, but a medical city. And that's why you got the medical center. Thanks to Mr. Dr. DeBakey and Dr. Denton Cooley. Mr. George Herman had that dream way back when he built and gave the city of Houston all that property to have the zoo over there and the park over there and built a hospital for middle class. And due to the fact that it was a discrimination law, that blacks could not mingle or get close to white people, Mr. George Herman then made it possible in 1948, because I was born at Herman Hospital. I was one of the first blacks to come out of Herman Hospital. They accepted blacks around 1947, because before then, blacks had to go either to a midwife, or if he was on the south side, you went to the Negro General Hospital. If he was on the north side, you went to St. Luke's, or you went to the county hospital, which was not called Ben Top. It was called Jefferson Davis. And to be born in the 40s and the 30s, even in the 50s, and even in the early 60s. But this is the history 
of our city that I love so much. And one thing about Judge Roy Harfine and his amusement park that he built, which was called the Astroworld. See, before then, they had a place that called Playland Park. And Playland Park, it wasn't the idea that they, you know, discriminated. Like I say, it was the law. Blacks could not go out to Playland Park. Playland Park right now, if you put it on the map, it's right there on Murworth and South Main today. That's what Playland Park was. And Playland Park only accepted blacks to go out there on Juneteenth. That was the only day blacks could go to Playland Park. And Playland Park was a park, was a an amusement park that had a roller coaster that blacks didn't never have the experience of riding other than looking at it on TV. And Playland Park did not really discriminated. I found that out because when I worked out there at Coach Stadium, and that was the original stadium, Coach Stadium. When the Coach 45 started their baseball season, before the Astrodome was built, they had to have a stadium to a temporary stadium. And Mr. Harfine had promised them by the time the Astrodome would be built, when I say they had promised the Major League Baseball Corporation, that by the time the Astrodome would be built and it would be built that blacks could sit anywhere they want to sit. But right now, it's a temporary stadium. It's Colt 45, and the blacks had to sit out there in the end zone or the outfield at that time because you're playing baseball. But it was understood that when the Astrodome would be built and would be open to be played, and the New York Yankees was the first one to come in there and play, and LBJ was the president, flew down to make sure that everything was good, and it was good, and Mickey Mantle and Roger Maris and all the New York Yankee people that we used to look at on TV and we looked up to came to Houston for the first time to play baseball. And um, and when George Roy Harfine opened up the Astrodome, it was no longer about a Jim Crow law because the Jim Crow law had already been thrown out. And some people, young people might know what is the Jim Crow law. The Jim Crow law is that white and blacks cannot mingle together. They would have to be separate. And that was the way it was. That was the way that, that, that they had did everything, especially when uh, after the Emancipation Proclamation. They did not want the blacks and the white to mingle. They did not want the blood to mix. They wanted to have pure white people and they wanted to have black people separate. But George Roy Harfine and his family did not discriminate. No. Even though they even though they did not want to discriminate, but the law was now demolished that they had to have equal rights for blacks to go wherever their money would take them. And that's when the Astrodome you could sit wherever you want to sit when you went in the dome, as long as you had the money to pay for the seat. Well, at Coach Stadium, they did not have that. But remember, it was only a temporary stadium, and then they had to change the name because of the beer company. Had pattern that name. And they had to change the name to the Astros. And the Harfine family and Mr. George Roy Harfine loved the Astro name that they named everything in that, in that area Astro. It went from the Harris County Dome Stadium to the Astrodome. And then when in 1969, when Mr. Harfine and his family built an amusement park for everybody, it was called Astroworld. And the building next door for the uh, rodeo and, and, and for the uh, uh, events that the rodeo was having every year, he built a place next to it was called the Astro Hall. So we did not have an identity. And when the NFL came to Texas, it did not come to Houston. It went to Dallas. And then when they did go to Dallas, they did not have full Dallas, Texas did not have full control over the NFL. It wouldn't be for Tex Strand. 
they wouldn't have a Dallas Cowboy. And it's one for being able to bring professional sports here in the state of Texas. That's why you have two stars. One star is for football, and that's the Dallas Cowboys. The next star is for baseball, and that's us here in Houston. Like they did in 2017, but we are so proud.